If you don't know, The Daily Wire is a website founded by Ben Shapiro that hosts mainly right-wing political commentary. A lot of their content also gets put on YouTube, which is where I personally watch it. As I've said before, politics interest me, and while I won't discuss my personal political opinions here, I will say that I like to watch and read both sides, the right and the left. I find Ben Shapiro pretty funny, and I used to watch a lot more of his content than I do now, but I think his content is enjoyable. However, I'm pretty fed up with one thing about The Daily Wire. Their movie reviews, and apparently they do video game reviews as well. Today I'm going to explain why. The most recent review that The Daily Wire hosted, or someone associated with The Daily Wire did, was Andrew Clavin's review of The Last of Us Part Two, controversial game that you all know I love. This was the first I had heard of Andrew Clavin, so I don't know if he's like this all the time, but I have quite a few problems with this review. First, it's clear right out the gate that he hasn't done his research, so to speak. He's, he explicitly states that he came incredibly close to finishing The Last of Us, but never did, which is already a problem. If you're reviewing a sequel, especially a sequel like The Last of Us 2, that hinges heavily on you knowing about Joel's lie and his relationship with Ellie at the ending, you need to finish the first game. And it confuses me why he didn't, because again, he says he came incredibly close, and as he's saying this, he's showing gameplay of the Tunnel of Infected, right before you make it to St. Mary's Hospital. He says he got bored of shooting zombies, but that's the last infected section of the game. Assuming he captured that gameplay, why not just finish part one for this review? Immediately following this, he says, and I quote, So we're back in the world. And the young girl, Ellie, has grown up and now she's a lesbian, because I don't know, but suddenly she's a lesbian. Again, clearly he hasn't done his research, because if he played the Left Behind DLC for the first game, or even googled the plot of it, he would know that Ellie has been a lesbian since that DLC came out six years ago. He then goes on to say that Abby is, or that you can't really tell if she is or isn't a transgender woman, meaning a man who thinks he's a woman, or has had an operation to become a woman. It's pretty clear that a lot of women in the WLF are pretty strong. Maybe not as strong as Abby, but they are literally fighting a war. They are at war with the Seraphites, so this makes a good amount of sense. Any person not looking at this under the lens of politics can make sense of this. She's a woman, the WLF needs all the people it can get to fight this war, so she'd logically be training to stay strong and be able to fight in this war. It's also said many times that Abby is one of the top dogs of the WLF, which makes sense because she's as strong as she is. I also find it funny that he continuously brings up this unproven claim that Abby is actually a man, but doesn't bring up Lev for the entire video. He does not mention Lev once. He then goes on to say we play as Abby hunting down Joel, which is just entirely untrue. We play as Abby seeing Jackson and her as her being saved by Tommy and Joel, but never when she's actually hunting Joel or when she's killing him. I will concede the point that the sex scene between Abby and Owen is goofy. He also uses this to set up a joke where he uses the scene from the first game where Ellie asks why the pages of Bill's magazine are stuck together, which is pretty funny, so I'll give him that. I'll also give him the fact that what IGN says about the sex scene is dumb, but that's unrelated, so let's move on. He then goes on to rant about how the critics are wrong and the people are right with the low review scores, and how he doesn't want this SJW stuff forced down his throat. I'm so done with that line. If you stop looking at, at things under the lens of politics, you'll just see it as a story, which is how it's meant to be seen. Nobody is saying it's immoral for you to not want to play the game, which is what he claims is being said. If you don't want to play the game, then just don't play the game. He then says that there will be a lot less tol tolerance for, quote, this sort of thing in a real apocalypse, and that women will be there to produce children and men with guns will rule, which I partially agree with. In an apocalypse, it would be more important than ever to have weaponry and for ch women to produce children, especially in The Last of Us's case, where 60% of the population is infected. But in a literal fucking war, women will also be needed to needed to fight, which is the position as Ab Abby is in. You can't just allocate all the women to producing children. Mr. Clavin then rants about 
playing as Abby and why it's so offensive to him, and how Joel was the hero of the first game, which is honestly a load of shit. Joel dies to motivate the player in Ellie. I talked about this in my Talking the Last of Us 2 series. Joel was also never really a hero. He may have been the protagonist, but he was most certainly not a hero. If he finished the first game, he would know this. We play as Abby to gain perspective, which is one of the main themes of this game. Perspective. He also says he thinks the game isn't going to do well, be which is funny, because by the time he made this video, Part 2 had sold over 4 million copies. That's essentially the end of his video. You'll see this a lot with Ben Shapiro's reviews as well. The people at the Daily Wire review games and movies almost exclusively by looking at their politics, which is just ridiculous. You cannot look at a story and judge it by only its politics, or the politics that the writers put in. Writers put their values and beliefs into their work all the time. You see it in everything. Just for clarification, I am not saying go cancel Daily Wire or anything like that. I wanted to respectfully point out what I think is a flaw in their reviews of movies and games and the way they look at stories in general. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all again in the next one. Bye for now.